Hey guys, hey, thanks for joining me today. Uh, request a video of how does Alexia on Combine really work? And uh, so other than just saying exceptionally well or awesome, um, we'll just go through the meat and potatoes of the machine. So there's a lot of confusion on these combines, um, how they really operate and, and the truth about them. And, um, but before that, I, did, I didn't get a video at all this week because it rained all week. We got five inches this week. It, it just, if it wasn't just an absolute downpour, we got two inches on one night and then uh, a half inch the next day. And then a couple days, it was just that drizzle mist where you only got a quarter inch or an eighth inch all day. But just that misty, you know, falls coming kind of misty drizzle. And then uh, we got another inch the other day and it just <sighs> got zero wheels turned. And that's the story of our summer. We, I, I am so far behind on, on anything because it just, you can't do anything. It, it just rains. Um, but whatever, it is what it is. So, yeah, while I got these shields off, we'll climb through the combine here and, and just kind of poke around on stuff and see how does these Lexion combines work. All right, so starting at the front of the combine, coming out of the feeder house, we hit what we call the APS drum. And then right behind it is a conventional thrashing cylinder, just like every other conventional combine. And then right behind that, you can kind of, you can kind of see the front of it back there. See it rotating, and that V in the middle, that is the impeller that feeds our rotors. And so let me climb down, and we will go look underneath because there's concaves for this APS system as well as a normal concave. All right, so we're under the feeder house. If we go up to the bottom side of the APS, there you can see it's a, I got the wire corn con pre-concave in, and you can see the rasp bars right behind it. And on this particular combine, it's an old-fashioned key stock concave, just like in my John Deere 8820. And uh, the theory here is with the round bar, what we got going on is, is here's the start of clean grain. We have a prep pan, not augers. Uh, one, it eliminates a lot of bearings in another drive system. But two is grain quality. So that grain from here just gets tossed and it goes right up the back and uh, right out the back there and then it will cascade. Um, and when it cascades, we'll look at that, but when it cascades, over the cliff, air is coming through, and the chaff is on top because the grain gets tossed up these prep pans. Well, the lighter chaff comes to the top, the heavy grain stays at the bottom. It's not churning in an auger, which is going to be a pro potential pr place for damage, and then it's, it's all blended. So by the time it gets back to the shoe, most of our mog, material other than grain, is already separated from the grain. So when it falls onto the shoe, it gets hit with air, and a tremendous amount of our chaff is separated at that point. There's some disawning plates under here. I don't know if I can sneak the camera in. There you can see the bottom of the main concave. See them doors moving? Is I can shut that round bar, that, that straw stuff above is, is the round bar. So these doors, I can shut these doors off. So in corn, in corn, easy to thrash, high volume crop, it's going to come into these round bar concaves. And the round bars, one, are going to help orientate the cob. But any easy to thrash grain, corn, easy to thrash corn is going to fall right into grain cleaning. It is not going to go through thrashing and separating. It's going to fall into cleaning and just follow that route through the combine. Depending on the corn, you can get up to 30% or more of your corn getting thrashed right here without even going into the main system. And that's that's part of the reason why these things are just such an animal in corn or high volume crops. It's just, it gets it out and puts it into cleaning right away and they make such good grain quality. Um, so I can shut them doors with just a simple lever right here for doing tough soybeans or any small grains, you just shut it off. And uh, if you get the soybeans that are super dry, 
you know, they're, they're just threshing on the head, then you can open that up. But if you start to get too many pods in the tank or you got a lot of pods coming through the returns, then you just close it. But basically how I'm doing it, open for corn, closed for everything else. But that that's, that's it down here. And then we can change that round bar concave with this bolt and this bolt. And then this segment just pops right out. It locks in the back. There's no bolts in the back. And then we can get key stock. We can get small hole, large hole, medium hole. We can custom weld whatever we want based on our conditions for here. and uh, Or our conditions of our crops, we can really help fine tune it here. On this combine with the aggressive key stock concave, it makes my combine more versatile. To It makes it a great all around from wheat to corn combine. We can get a round bar concave if all you're ever going to do is just corn and beans. We can get a round bar concave, and then in tough beans, you just get a key stock um, APS concave. And so that's that's what it looks like down here, and uh, we'll, we'll go around the sides. So we come out. Here's Behind here is our, our impeller to feed the rotors. And then the rotors start here, and they go all the way out the back. And then our gearboxes are sitting up in here. And uh, so they're a long, long rotor. You saw that on the ground. And them rotors in lengthwise are longer than a New Holland twin rotor, except the New Holland has to do thrashing and then separating, where we've got two modes of thrashing up front. If it's that tough of a crop, you're going to get a couple percent you know, you're going to have a little more work for the rotors to do. Um, but that that's kind of the grain flow of the combine. You can see the cylinder shaft is down here. Here's the impeller shaft. So it, it just kind of works its way up and then into the rotors and then out the back. Starting up at the engine gear cage, you got your hydraulic bank to the right. Uh, as far as power out to the combine, you got the engine gear case up there. So he, on the the furthest inside belt is that big multi-rib belt, and he's going to come on down to, to that pulley, to this shaft. This shaft's our primary cross shaft with our feeder house clutch, and it gets power to the other side of the combine. So from here, that's our feeder house clutch, so it can engage power to our variable speed, which then can run power forward up to the feeder house. Not that bad of a deal. <clears throat> it also comes off of here, runs a belt back to here, to that bigger pulley, and that runs down pulleys and belts to run our clean grain tailings and uh, shoe. And so that works easy. The next belt out on the engine gear case is here for the unloading system, so it just has a hydro all, all of this stuff is just a hydraulic engage. You can see the hydraulic cylinder right there. <clears throat> so it's just hydraulically engaged. So then it just comes out to here, one belt there, over, and uh, down for our clean or our uh, unloading system, our grain tank. The very outside belt comes down and then runs back to the chopper. The neat thing about it is when you turn on the thrashing system, the chopper turns on first and then the thrashing system. So if there's a, a slug of stuff happened to be in the rotor or you did a power shutdown, you're not turning on the separating and the chopper at the same time. And while things are winding up, it's trying to chop it. So you get a slug of unchopped and not very good spread. That chopper is already up and running when the thrashing turns on. So it just immediately blows it out. And uh, with our chopper, we got a two-speed. You know, you got two pulleys, high, a big and small, up in there, small and big, and then on the other end, big to small, um, to go from high to low. Pretty simple. There we see it better. <clears throat> so we're in high now for beans and everything else, and then you bring it over here to corn um, in low speed. Around the back of the combine, obviously, you got your shaft spreader. You got your cleaning shoe above us is our grain pan so any grain coming off the rotor slides down that pan and goes to the front you see the mound of chaff that's chaff that I knocked down um, was in the grain tank digging around the rotors 
and uh, so you can see them gaps right below there you see that air gap that light that's where air is coming through and as that grain cascades from the top to the middle to the bottom level it keeps getting blasted with air so by the time the grain gets to our shoe there's very little chaff left and that's why when I do rye even with these long fingers with these big big fingers I can do rye with these things open I think they were open about like that. That's how far they were open. You're thinking, what the hell? You know, but that rye was as clean as seed. And I like this shoe that I can I can set the rear up different from the front. And then it's all automatic from there on. Um, but allows me a little control, a little fine tuning. Pretty simple system. Again, no augers up here at this end. Um, some of the competition, you had your shoe augers up front. Well, they ran them augers all the way up here and then had reverse sliding to pull that chaff underneath the walkers back down. It, uh, it, it's a very, a very simple system. It works very efficiently. Uh, let's look at the other side. So this side, we got our power coming across. This is the drive for our cylinder and uh, so you got your variable speeds driving the cylinder it's a two-speed gearbox so we're bolt the gearbox to the pulley for high speed and we bolt the gearbox to the combine shell for low speed um, and then just simply up to our APS drum <clears throat> off of here we also come down this is for the fan pretty simple system we run a suction tube this suction tube comes up and sucks off of our rotary screen to help keep that clean got return elevator pretty normal drive system clean grain elevator goes up moisture meter for our our monitoring our ag leader system <clears throat> then we run a big belt run a big belt back to drive the variable speed for the rotors so this is the that pulley there comes into the back side where my gearboxes were and uh, so all in all that that that's the drive system of the combine um, this is the shoe this is for our 3d sieve so this is just a pendulum so if the combine goes on a side hill this hydraulic cylinder moves it's got valving inside it moves this hydraulic cylinder which moves this bracket forward and backward which ultimately instead of the shoe just going straight forward and back the shoe starts to throw uphill as it moves forward and back that's why the Lexions I mean they can handle a really steep hill and you don't see much side hill kits you don't nobody complains about side hills with the Lexions because of that shoe it's a pretty slick system I, I, I I've really enjoyed this combine um, learning my way through it. This thing is, has been an absolute treat.